Father, we submit ourselves to your word tonight. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. You can take your seats and get out your Bibles. Amen. Even as we begin to share. I want to talk about the hand of God on your life. The hand of God on your life. The hand of God on your life. I want to suggest to us that now more than ever, thank you, we need the hand of God in our lives. Now more than ever. We're living in a time when if you are not walking with God, the principalities that exist will bring you down. We're living in a time when if you are not sober, if you are not alert, if you are not watchful, if you don't understand the reason for your faith, the enemy will bring you down. Today, more than any other time before, the church is being challenged. And the world is waiting for us to give an answer. And that answer must come from the church. And let me say, especially the young generation. Because they expect us to define what is godly. To define what is holy. To define what is right. You cannot do that if the hand of God is not over your life. I want to suggest that for the hand of God to rest on your life, you must be a man and a woman of faith. You must be a man and a woman of faith. One scripture that I love, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 declares that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So faith is what assures you of God's hand in your life. Faith in God assures you of his hand in your life. Faith in God assures you. Of his hand in your life. There's a reason why I'm repeating for emphasis. It's because this generation wants to believe in God from a mental intellectual place. But God is raising a remnant in our time that will believe God from the heart. They will believe God even when things do not require them to believe him. I know I'm talking to young people and so I'm sowing the right seed right now in Jesus name. Young people, listen to me. Dancing is not the only thing you can do. You can heal the sick. Having dreadlocks and studs is not the only look you can have. You can carry the glory of God on your face. Oh, I'm talking to young people. Because this generation has made us to believe that young people cannot lead us in worship. All they know how to do is rap. I have nothing against rap. I have nothing against all those things. Please get me right. I'm saying it's time we redefine how the church is supposed to look like. It's time we redefine how the young people in the house of God are meant to look like. The standards of faith for us who are older than you are not any different from the standards of faith that God requires of you. In the kingdom of God there is no child. In the kingdom of God, there are only sons and daughters. Oh, am I talking to somebody? I said in the kingdom of God, there are sons and daughters. You can evangelize. I said you can heal the sick. You can cast out devils. You can raise the dead. You can walk in real anointing. I'm tired of going for meetings where young people are and all we are doing is dancing. We have hype men on stage and they're making us sweat. But no presence, no word. 
because that is what is making young people, you know, get excited. But I have come with a different message to challenge the young generation that even you should be able to teach the word in such a way that even your bishop can sit down and listen to you and get blessed. Oh, shatalabaya. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. And he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So before you can make your move, I want to see how you move in the spirit. Oh, are you hearing what I am saying? I said I want to see how you move in the spirit. This generation needs the hand of God on their life. I said we need the hand of God on our lives. We need the hand of God on our lives. What's the difference between us and them? Can I use that analogy, us and them? Tell your neighbor, us and them. <laughs> Do you know who them are? I mean, let me ask a question before I just get deep into this thing and begin to share a few words. Let me hope that I will buy into that time. How is it that a song that gets an award, a song that gets an award that is called gospel, has nothing in it that is gospel. How is it? What has happened to the young generation? What has happened to psalmists and worshippers and spiritual songs and musicians who are anointed who can sing songs that when I am on my sick bed, I can get up healed because of the anointing of God? How is it that Audi Dance is the best gospel song of the year? How is it? How is it that playful songs that disrespect dignitaries and spiritual entities like shoot Satan are winning awards? How is that possible? Or you may not like me very much, but I am not here to be liked. I am here to declare the word. I'm here to set some things straight. Oh, Jesus. How is that gospel? How is that gospel? What inspires the songs you write? What inspires the dance moves that you make? Do, do you have the hand of God on your life? Can I listen to you and get healed? Can I listen to you and get ministered? Can my life be transformed? Can a marriage that is in trouble be transformed by the songs you sing? Can someone who has cancer listen to ordinance and get healed? God has sent us to a dying world. The Bible declares in Romans chapter 8 verse 26 onwards that creation is groaning in pain and it is waiting for the manifestation of sons and daughters in the kingdom. Men who carry an anointing. People who know their God. People who will bring healing. People who will bring deliverance to this generation. Not auditors. But let me move away from that. Because I don't want it, this, this to be about that. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God is waiting for you to be manifested. Say it again. God is waiting for you to be manifested. Say it one more time. God is waiting for you to be manifested. Write this down. I want you to appreciate four things about faith because we're talking about faith being the key that causes the hand of God to rest on your life. Number one, faith is a display of confidence in God. Faith is a display of confidence in God. Faith is a display of confidence in God. Do this young people, are we confident in our God? Can we stand in faith in the face of facts that speak differently and challenge who we are. Can you trust God to make you popular? Not your dance, not your gift, not your skill, not anything else, but God in you. Can you be famous because you carry God in you? Do you have confidence in him? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. Hebrews 10, 35. So do not, everybody, let's read it together. 
do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly. Come on, say it again. Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly. God is waiting for the young people to believe God in the midst of darkness. God is waiting for you to turn around this generation and tell them, look, this is how it's supposed to be done. And that is my confidence in God. Faith is confidence in God. Faith is believing God can do it, can do it when man has said it cannot be done. Faith is knowing that as I believe in him, he can change my life. Oh. I challenge young people in church, I tell them, listen. Because they came to me and said, we have a problem. We have, we have the older youth, we call them the senior youth. The ones who are old enough to be married, but they're not married. And so because they're not married, automatically they attend youth meetings. You know those ones. And then there are those who are emerging. They're just coming out of their teens and they're getting into, uh, you know, the young, exciting life of being young. And, and them, they, they are not sure if they want to be married. They're still trying to understand their choice of career. They're, they're, they're looking to see where do I place myself in life. So this very energetic group meets, but the other group, which is a bit settled, they look like they're married, but they're not married. They feel like if we attend that youth meeting, it is childish. And this is what I told them. I said, what do you talk about when you meet? Because what you talk about determines who you attract. Can I say that one more time? What you talk about determines who you attract. If, you all, if, if the questions you're asking in your youth meetings, is, is it wrong to kiss? If those are the kinds of conversations you're having, then you are, there are people who will not come for your meetings. Because they are beyond that. Someone who is 35 has tried it all. The question is no longer is it wrong to kiss. There is a different question they are asking. Lord, am I abandoned? Am I a eunuch? Am I going to die alone? So you need to answer those questions before you can answer these struggling questions. Amen. If you package your life with content and this brings, is brought about as a result of you trusting in God, believing in God for the impossible. I know I'm being basic, but I have to remind people of the basics. Hallelujah. Then you can attract even the older generation and they will listen to you. When Jesus went into the temple and he was 12, the scribes of the, of the temple, the elders of the temple, the priests of the temple sat down and they listened to him. Until his parents forgot that we had someone. And they would come back looking for him. They found him and said, where were you? He said, don't you know I must be about my father's business. A 12 year old causing men who are old, people who are theologians, to sit down and listen. Why? Because this one had content. I say, may you carry content in the name of Jesus. Through your faith in God, may you grow in your understanding of God. Write this down. Faith is an asset of unlimited value. Faith is an asset of unlimited value. What, what does that mean? It means that faith will put you in command over everything. If you're going to have authority, young people, you must exercise faith even in impossible situations. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. All things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible to him that believes. I'm excited when I see young people walking into a hospital and making sure a few people are discharged. Because they have what we call faith. Say faith. Shout it again, faith. Say it again, faith. An asset. Can you say faith is an asset? Of unlimited value. You're asking God, where is my next provision coming from? The answer is in faith. If you believe God enough, provision will come. If you believe God enough, your husband will come. If you believe God enough, your wife will come. The problem with this generation is that they are looking this way, not this way. We stopped having vertical relationships. We are focusing on horizontal relationships. 
Instead of asking God to reveal to you who this person is that you will spend the rest of your life with, you're asking other people, what do you think about her? What do you think about him? What do you think about For without faith, life can be very hard. I said without faith, life can be very hard. Write this down. Number three, faith can be unbeaten in battle. Faith can never be beaten in battle. Faith can never be beaten in battle. Faith can never be beaten in battle. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. I'm rushing that through because I want to talk about the hand of God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Faith can never be beaten in battle. And when Paul is advising the Ephesian church on how to pray and how to exercise spiritual warfare, one of the things he tells them, he says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take up the shield of faith with which you can distinguish. When you carry faith and you begin to have faith in your spirit and grow in faith in your heart, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. I said no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Every temptation that comes you will conquer. Every trial that comes you will conquer. Every challenge that comes you will conquer. Because faith extinguishes the arrows of the enemy. Hallelujah. Can, I, can everybody say faith is my ultimate weapon in spiritual warfare. Say it again. Faith is my ultimate weapon in spiritual warfare. What is faith? You know what faith is. What is faith? The, disc the, the description of that is in scripture. What is faith? Hebrews 11.1. 1. What does it say? Now faith is the substance, the evidence. Say it again. Faith is the substance of what you hope for. The evidence of what you cannot see. So faith is not tangible. But faith produces tangible results. Faith is not tangible. But it produces tangible results. Number four. Just rushing through this. Faith unleashes its power through the tongue. Faith unleashes its power through the tongue. Faith unleashes its power through the tongue. Now one time Jesus, when he was being arrested in John chapter 18. I want to show you something interesting, verse 6. John chapter 18, verse 6. He was being arrested. Because Jesus was not just an ordinary person. He was a man of faith. He opened his mouth and he spoke. And as soon as he spoke, power came out of his mouth. Power came out of his mouth. That's faith. Let's read it together. It says, as soon as, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Everyone say power in the mouth. Power. Say it again, power in the mouth. Power. That man who wants to seduce you, as soon as you open your mouth and say, I am a daughter of the kingdom, the power of God must hit them. Oh, we are talking about the supernatural. Tell your neighbor we are talking about the supernatural. When your boss comes and tries and tells you you must do this, or when that traffic officer stops you on the road and says you must pay a bribe, as soon as you open your mouth, because you're a man of faith, you're a woman of faith, power. Oh, it's because we have not harnessed power in this spirit that's why we are weak that's why we're being challenged and jesus said that on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it it's time we begin to raise young people that are prophetic young people that are apostolic young people that carry the anointing of god and the power of god everywhere they go there's a shaking there's a shaking i was looking at the testimonies of a church in the U.S. And a leader called Bill Johnson. And he says his young people, one time they decide to just exercise the authority that God has given them. And they walk into a shopping mall and they stand at the entrance and they begin to prophesy to strangers. Someone is walking, coming to, uh, you know, buy some stuff and they say, hey, Esther, 
This is what God is saying, blood, ta, 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 and people are kneeling down, crying in public, and people are wondering what is happening because young people are demonstrating the anointing and the power of God. They have grown their faith. They are not just interested in having gigs and having DJs come over and guys, you know, to psych them up. No, they are interested in changing lives and changing generation, in demonstrating the power of God in which principalities have no power over. Uh, do you understand what I'm talking about? I said this can be done. In if you will judge your faith, your faith in God, your faith in God, not your faith in your pastor, not your faith in your church or denomination, but faith in the God who is able to do all things that men have considered impossible. I'm crazy about the kingdom. Not the kingdom without power, but the kingdom with power. I'm crazy about the kingdom. And I'm, I've been preaching everywhere. I said, we must get back to the kingdom and we must begin to redeem the nations and the kingdoms of the earth. We must begin to change the situations in this nation. We must begin to change the situations in our land. And it begins with us. It begins in our churches. It begins in our youth groups. We must walk in the power of God. I declare in the name of Jesus. May the hand of God rest on you today as you dare believe him. I say may the hand of God rest on you today as you dare believe him. I say may the hand of God rest on you today as you dare believe him in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 15, 16. Jeremiah 15, 16. The Bible declares... That thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by the name, O Lord God of hosts. Thy words were found, and I ate them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of mine heart. I pray that as I continue to share, you will find that the word of God shall be unto you, the joy and the rejoicing of your heart. In the name of Jesus, may the word of God be unto you, the joy and the rejoicing of thy heart. Why do we need the hand of God in our lives? Number one, the hand of God is the hand of rescue. Without the hand of God in our lives, we cannot be rescued. The hand of God is the hand of rescue. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 8. The hand of God is the hand of rescue. And the Lord brought us forth. Out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and wonders. Let's declare it one more time together. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders, may the young people of D.C. Zimmerman be rested on by the hand of God. May any trial and every strategy of the enemy trying to take your lives and take your dignity and abort your destiny face the hand of God. And may that hand bring you out and deliver you in Jesus name with great signs and wonders signs and wonders signs and wonders let it be known in the city of Nairobi you don't touch the youth of DC Zimmerman because they carry an anointing and the hand of God is upon their lives any person that dares challenge you, may the hand of God in your life, outstretched and terrible hand of God, manifest signs and wonders in your life in the name of Jesus. When the hand of God is upon you, when you meet cripples, they walk. Acts chapter 3. 
Acts chapter 3, they met a cripple who was born that way and he began to walk. When you face a sorcerer like Simon, when you have the hand of God over your life, that sorcerer must repent and turn to God because you're not just talking, you're not just dancing, you're not just singing or rapping, you're not just demonstrating gifts and talents and skills, you are demonstrating the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost in your life. Now you see I, I'm talking about skills and talents a lot because I'm tired man. Every youth meeting you go in this city, every youth conference you go, the, the bulk of it is just entertainment. It's drama. It's dance. It's artist A, artist B, artist C. Very little of the word of God. Very little of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. I used to attend youth meetings when I was young and I'm not very... I'm not very old. I'm, I'm still young. I want to believe I'm still young. There's some white appearing. I'm fighting it. But hey, you know, you can't fight with age. But the focus was on how to receive the Holy Spirit. We would be taught about the Holy Spirit. And the preacher would lay his hands on us to receive the Holy Ghost. Young people who are 12, 9, 8. All the way to 18, 20, 21, 25. People who were bubble in the Holy Ghost. And that was what constituted Keshas for the young people. But today is disco lights. Disco lights. And smoke on stage. No, don't worry. We also do it in eternal life. I'm not, I'm not condemning you guys. I know you guys do it. We do it together. I mean, come on, Pasi. But what I'm saying is this. We, we have stopped focusing on the real thing that changes lives. Young people are not going to change because you give them an opportunity to dance. And listen, let me show you. Young people go through church. They learn how to dance and then they end up in the secular world. They go through church, learn how to play instruments, learn how to sing. And then they end up in the secular world. All these artists you see that are your calling secular, all of them used to be former praise and worship leaders in church. We are losing them to the world. Why? Because something is wrong with our strategy. Something is wrong with our methodology. We are focused so much on the outward things. Things that excite the flesh. We have forgotten what puts things together and holds people. And that is things that focus on the spirit. Building yourselves up in the most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You don't build your faith by dancing. You build your faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. You don't build your faith by sitting and doing drama. You build your faith by speaking in tongues. It is praying in the Holy Ghost that charges your spirit man. It is praying in the Holy Ghost that grows you and strengthens your inner man with might. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I read an interesting scripture recently. I've read it many times before, but I've never seen this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. It says, now come out from among them and be separate. Come out from among them, be separate. Tell your neighbor, there is a them. Amen. Say it again, there is a them. Amen. To come out from. Then it says, let us cleanse our selves from what all filthiness of the and did you know that there's a filthiness of the spirit for the longest time I, i've preached against the filthiness of the flesh now the works of the flesh are this the acts of the flesh are this the manifestations of the flesh are this but i didn't know that there's a filthiness until recently, God revealed this to me. There's a filthiness that doesn't just target the flesh. It targets the spirit. That's why you find that there are people who are okay. They're not sinning. They're not sleeping around. They don't smoke. They don't go to clubs. They're in church, dedicated, and they love God. But there's still something wrong about them because they have been defiled in their spirit. The greatest sin today is unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, tribalism. These are the devils that you cannot see physically, but they poison the spirits of people. How can you manifest the power of God when your spirit is also defiled? How? We shall be delivered in the name of Jesus by the hand of God. 
the hand of God will cleanse us from all filthiness. I said the hand of God will cleanse us from all filthiness. Do you know why the hand of God must be upon you? It's because without it you go nowhere. Many of us are focusing on building charisma. And we are forgetting that character is also important. That's what we've been doing, Pasi. We're charging the charismatic exercise of young people, their skill, and we're using scriptures like your gift will cause you to stand before great men or great kings. And that scripture has inspired a lot of young people. Young people are everywhere thinking, how do I make it? How do I win a groove award? How do I win this? How do I go there? How do I become famous? And when they become famous, they begin to abuse you. They call you fans. They, they no longer think that you are in the church. And then they say, oh, my style of music and my genre of music is changing a little bit uh, because I am reaching out to, you know, to more, to a wider audience and you may not understand. And so they talk about singing about Jesus and they make, begin to sing about nonsense. Baby, oh my. And then because you have been deceived and duped and you're blind, you go ahead and take that song and give it an award. And you call it the best gospel. Best gospel what? Glorifying the flesh? Who? May the hand of God deliver you from the deception of the age. May the hand of God deliver us from the deception of the age. We need to go back. To an era where Zimmerman will be in the news for the right reasons. That there are people who are emptying hospitals. They walk into hospitals and the sick walk out. Because they carry an anointing. They have the hand of God rested upon their lives. It's a hand of deliverance. That comes with what? Signs and wonders. Number two. The hand of God is your access into the realm of mysteries. The hand of God is your access to the realm of... I know I'm talking to young people, so don't ask... That person is sharing messages that are meant for the main service. Yes, this is a main service. This is a main service. You are the church today. You are receiving these principles to change your life. Are you hearing me? The realm of mysteries is only accessible to those who have the hand of God on their lives. Young people, I pray that we will desire the hand of God on our lives. 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 15 to 17. 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 15 to 17. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's read it together. Let's go. But now, same musician. How many of us are musicians? And by the way, you guys have beautiful voices. Yani, I walked in, I was like, maze we we. <sighs> You're singing good. But can I encourage you? There is also an anointing when you sing. The presence of God was evident. I'm not saying that to excite you. I'm just telling you what I felt. Yeah, I know how I feel the presence of God. So I walked in and as you were worshiping, I, I felt it. I felt the presence of God. So he said, bring me a musician. Then it happened that when the musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Oh, I pray that the hand of the Lord will come upon Bahati. <laughs> May the hand of the Lord come upon Rafton. Yeah. Amen. May the hand of the Lord come upon Willie Paul, in the name of Jesus, we are praying for them in Jesus' name that they will start singing songs that will cause devils to leave people. Oh, shata rabayatala. We must, we must desire good things for them. We must pray and say, we're not here to condemn anyone. We are uncovering mysteries. When the hand of the Lord came upon him, verse 16, let's go to verse 16. Let's read it together. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Verse 17. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, you shall not see rain. Ye that 
Yet that valley shall be filled with water so that you and your cattle and your animals may be drink, may, may able to drink. Now listen to this. A prophet says, bring me a musician. And it is while the musician was playing under the hand of the Lord that a prophet had access into the mysteries of life. The hand of God will guarantee access into mysteries, hidden things. You may have been wondering why in your family, everybody is single, but they have kids. You may have been wondering why all your uncles are alcoholics. All of them. You may have been wondering why there is no graduate in your family. All of you are from four livers. Nobody has gone beyond that. You may have been wondering why. Am I talking to people here? Those mysteries are uncovered when the hand of God is upon you. You break those kinds of curses when the hand of God is upon you. You redefine the destiny of your family, of your life, of your house when the hand of God is upon you. You may have been wondering why nobody has ever driven a car, even a bicycle in your village. And you're wondering why, despite me being passionate and loving God and living for him and praying regularly and fasting regularly and applying the principles of God's word, I'm still stuck in life and I still look like my villagers. When you have the hand of God rest upon you, you get divine answers. And you get divine solutions. And when you go back to your village, you bring divine solutions. A miracle can happen in your family. A miracle can happen in your village. A miracle can happen in your house. A miracle can happen in your marriage. As long as you understand, when the hand of God is upon me, I get divine access to mysteries. And because we have no divine access to mysteries, we run to every Tom, Dick, and Harry that rushes into this country and calls themselves a prophet. That's why they are stealing from you and there's nothing you can do it about it because you don't understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Yet Jesus promises in Mark chapter 4, verse 12, I believe 12 or 13, he says that it has been given to you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. You must never be caught in a web of darkness. You must never be confused as a child of God. When the hand of God is upon you, revelations of who you are, the struggles you fight, you're dealing with, and the challenges you're facing, and the steps that you must make in life, begin to unravel to you. Young people, am I talking to you? I'm challenging you that tonight you begin to receive what? Visions of heaven. The Bible says in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And what will young people do? See visions. Access the mysteries of heaven and the mysteries of the kingdom. So prophets are coming and they are saying all kinds of things. They call your number 0718-721-460. If that is your number, stand up. Your second name is Wanja, stand up. You're married to Pastor Wesley. Stand up. <laughs> and you stand up expecting to receive. Then he says, wait. The spirit of the Lord is saying that you sow a seed of $1,000. And you're standing there and your spirit shrinks. Because you know you don't have $1,000. Even 1,000 shillings you don't have. So you're thinking, is this word beyond me? So these prophets are manipulating us because we don't have access. But today, in the name of Jesus, as the hand of God comes upon you, you will have access. We need to run these fake prophets out of town and run them out of business. You will no longer be excited because somebody called your name. After all, they could have Googled your name. You no longer be excited because somebody knows your house number. They may have been told by your neighbor. You may no longer be excited about somebody who knows that you have cancer. They may have consulted your pastor before they came on stage. And 
after all, even if they understand who you are and your history, that's not prophetic. I know what prophetic is this. They must tell you where you're going tomorrow. They must speak about your future. They must tell you what is yet to come. That's prophetic. Don't tell me about my past. Oh, I see bones buried in your village. That has nothing to do with where I am and where I am going. I need you to tell me where God is taking me. Oh, tonight somebody is getting delivered in the name of Jesus. I say, may the hand of the Lord rest upon you to receive divine mysteries. Let no prophet surprise you. There's a prophet called Agabus in the book of Acts. He came to Paul and he told Paul, I see by prophetic grace and anointing that when you go to Rome and Jerusalem, they will bind you, they will arrest you and take you to the dungeons. And Paul says, I know. <laughs> and I'm still going. Because I understand my purpose in life. In fact, the brothers who were around, who, when they heard this, they began to persuade Paul, please don't go. You're a blessing to the church. We don't want to lose you. And the Bible says that Paul encouraged them. <laughs> because of the prophetic word that he received, he encouraged them and he said, and he strengthened their faith, telling them he understood who he was. He said, I must go to that place. There is a destiny. There is a purpose on my life that I must fulfill. Why? Because Paul had already seen his future in the spirit. May somebody see their future in the spirit by the hand of the Lord. Today if I tell you, don't leave, don't leave, close that door. I see accidents. Nobody will leave the church. I attended a meeting and the prophet was prophesying and people were going out and he saw, he saw thousands. I mean, Pesa ikitoka, kasema, close that door. I've seen five terrible accidents. Don't leave. We must pray. And everybody rushed back in, full of fear. Lest they are the ones who are going to die. May you get the attitude of Paul. When you see into your future, even if a seer sees an alternate future, it doesn't scare you, you leave. You say, ah, that's not my word. God bless you guys, we'll see you tomorrow. And you go home. For God has not given us the spirit of? But he has given us the spirit of what? Love, power, and a what? Sound mind. May your mind be sound enough to receive the mysteries of God. May the hand of God rest upon you for you to receive the mysteries of God in Jesus' name. Somebody shout yes. My last point because I have... I can see my time. My goodness, this is traumatizing. Pastor Andrew, you need to come here <laughs> and see what I am seeing. Hey, Metuweza. Pentecostals, Mumetuweza. Hey, 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 Metuweza. Mungo Abariki. Ah, Jesus. Number three, the hand of God is the hand of supernatural breakthroughs. The hand of God is the hand of supernatural breakthroughs. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 3. The hand of God is the hand of supernatural breakthroughs. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 3. I'm not opening because uh, you have been opening for me. So, unless you're on strike, I can open. Are you on strike? Oh, it's open on this side. Oh, okay. Can we read it together? That says the Lord who is anointed to Cyrus whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and to loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. Verse 2, verse 2, verse 2. And I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. Everybody says supernatural breakthrough. Do you know that you cannot cut the bars of iron with your bare hands? Do you know you cannot break the gates of bronze with just might? You need something extra, something from another place that is able to handle elements on this world. And you need the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the hand of God. I declare on your lives in Jesus name. Every gate of bronze that is shutting you from arriving to your destination is broken by the anointing that is released by the hand of God on your
your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So those nightmares must stop because the hand of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus, that struggle of the flesh, the struggle with masturbation, it must stop because the hand of God is upon you. You will see girls and you will be fine. You will see handsome boys and you will be fine. Those spirits of seduction and immorality that are standing between you and your destiny, they must lose you because the hand of God is upon you. He says you are my anointed one and my hand is upon you. It's time you stop rehabilitating yourself through the strategies of men and engage the Holy Ghost to empower you so that you can be delivered. The Bible declares that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. In John 8.32 it says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You don't need anointing you don't need somebody to lay his hands on you. You don't need to sow a seed. You just need access to the hand of God. And you ride home free. Kappa. In Galatians chapter 1, chapter 5, verse 1, it declares that it is for freedom that Jesus set you free. Do not let anybody tie you into bondage again. I say don't allow anything or anyone cause you to be bound again. Jesus has set you free. I say Jesus has set you free. He died on the cross so that you can be free. Free from the struggle of the flesh. Free from poverty. Free from lack free from sickness and disease free from the power and the sting of death I say Jesus died so that you can be free it doesn't matter whether you're 12 13 14 16 18 22 25 when you encounter Jesus you are totally free because the hand of God is upon you may the hand of God rest upon you May the hand of God rest upon you. Young people, may the hand of God rest upon you. I declare, may the hand of God rest upon you. May you be delivered in the name of Jesus from every spirit of oppression. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9 declares, Because you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore the Lord thy God has anointed you and exalted you above your companions. You cannot be number last when the anointing of the Holy Ghost has rested on your life. When the hand of God is upon you, you become a Cyrus. They may not know you in Israel, but God knows you. They will call you anointed because the hand of God is over your life. You may not have come from a rich family or an educated family or a gifted family. You may have come from a place where there are jiggers, but by the hand of the Lord that is going to rest on your life, he will cause you to come from obscurity to notoriety. They are about to call you by name, not by your situation. They called the man who was by the pool, the invalid. They called the woman who bled for 12 years, the woman with the issue of blood they did not know their names but when the hand of God touched them they had to know their names I declare may God know your may people know your name may people know your name because the hand of God is resting on you they will no longer identify you with your situation they will no longer call you Kamau Masufuria they will call you Kamau the anointed brother Kamau the anointed brother come out the miracle worker come out the prophet come out the apostle they need to define you by what God has released into your spirit because the hand of the Lord is rested on you young people in deliverance church Zimmerman stand on your feet and begin to ask the Lord to rest his hand on your life in the name of Jesus Katabaya Lift your voice to heaven. Say, Lord, I need your hand over my life. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. 
I have faith. I need your hand over my life. Rest your hand on my life. I need supernatural encounters. I need access into the mysteries of God. I need to so high because the hand of God is over my life. Come on, pray in the spirit. Open your mouth and cry to Abba. Ask him for his hand over your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh. I just need two minutes, sir. Can I get two minutes? Thank you, sir. The guy who was playing the piano, just I need someone to, to play some, something soft there. And in that atmosphere, I'm a guest. And I understand the ethics of ministry and understand protocols. I'm not going to lay any, any hands on anyone. But I want you to come here if you're saying you need the hand of the Lord on your life. I'm just going to pronounce and declare a blessing and call on God who is able to anoint you because he is the anointer. Men do not anoint. It is God who anoints. Those who are saying, I need the hand of the Lord on my life. My life must speak of God's oracles. My life must testify of the presence of God. Rush to the altar in the name of Jesus. I don't want to live an ordinary young life. I don't just want to go through the years of my young life just like that. I don't want to be known for things that are external. I need to be known for things that are real. I need to be known for the presence of Abba, the power of Abba, the grace of Abba, the anointing of Abba, Father. That's what I need to be known for. And may the hand of the Lord rest on me. Lift up your hands to heaven. Oh, shat halalaba. Shend alalaba hishara. Shend alalaba. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up. Hallelujah. Till I come on, tell him, tell him, Spirit of God, I want to run. Hallelujah! Fill me up, fill me up till I overflow. Till I overflow, yeah. I want to run over. Jesus, precious Holy Spirit, fill me up. Oh, I need you, Spirit of God, I need you. Oh, I want to run over. Over, fill me up. Spirit of God, fill me up tonight. Fill somebody here tonight. Fill a young man here tonight. Feel a young girl here tonight by your spirit, by your wisdom, by your power, by your grace. Feel somebody here. Feel me hey, I, till I overflow. I want to run. Oh, Jesus, I want to run. Oh, fill me up. Come on, pray, 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 pray in the Holy Ghost. Let Him fill you. Let Him fill you. Let Him fill. Let Him baptize you. Let tongues on fire rest on you right now. Let an anointing come upon you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, fill me up, fill me up, oh, fill me up, fill me up, fill me up, Lord, Spirit of God, I need you. Spirit of God, I need you. Holy Ghost, I need you. Fill me up, fill me up. Oh, fill me up, fill me up. Oh, fill me up. Spirit of God, run over, run over. I need to overflow with your grace.
grace I need to overflow with your anointing I need to overflow with revelation from you God it's no longer going to be ordinary it's no longer going to be normal it is a time for a change it's time for revival it's time for a paradigm shift let the hand of God the hand of God the hand of God Yaka Prada Zota rest on somebody rest on that young man rest on that young girl rest on them right now let your hand come upon them anoint them with grace and power in the name of Jesus fill me up till I overflow till I overflow yeah, I want to run over, run over. The atmosphere is changing now. The atmosphere is changing now. He come out all over. Shadadadaba. Somebody is getting insight. Somebody is getting revelation. Somebody is receiving a grace. Somebody is receiving an anointing. Somebody's life is turning around right now. Somebody's future is being reshaped. Somebody's destiny is being delivered. Jesus has come to your rescue. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Come on, worship him. Sing. Oh, oh, nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Lord. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It is settled. It is done in the spirit in Jesus' name. Oh, 